You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. All set for your flight? Yep, I've got everything I need. Eye mask, neck pillow, T-Mobile, headphones. Wait, T-Mobile? You bet. Free in-flight Wi-Fi. 15% off all Hilton brands. I never go anywhere without T-Mobile. Same goes from a water bottle, chewing gum, nail clippers, okay, passport. Okay, I'm going to leave you to it. Find out how you can experience travel better at T-Mobile.com slash travel. Qualifying plan required. Wi-Fi were available on select U.S. airlines. Deposit and Hilton Honors membership required for 15% discount. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop! Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, and I'm joined in the studio with Ken and Jeff. How's it going? Hi, Neil. What's going on? Uh, it's a little sad today uh, as we look over a uh, very remnant of the uh, Toshiro Mifune uh, sword in the Seven Samurai mm-hmm. uh, in the in the mud. But uh, we see a mic stand here that's empty with a pair of headphones that uh, were left behind. Uh, Matt is no longer with us. Uh, he's still alive, <laughs> but he's I'm no longer nervous for a second. <laughs> and he, he's apparently still agreed to do the show. Uh, so he's on Skype. How's it going, Matt? It's going good. I was thinking about leaving a cup and string, but 2,000 miles of string might get in the way of some things. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, well, you're you're in sunny Los Angeles, and it's pretty hot today, apparently, right? It's hot every day, from yeah. what I've learned. It's the, the, only, <laughs> it's the only state in the union where uh, weathermen can say the same thing every day, pretty much. Um, yeah, it works out. Yeah, it works out. Uh, so, uh, Matt is going to be Skyping uh, with us from now on from Los Angeles, but it's still going to work out, so don't fret. Actually, uh, it'll probably work out more than it used to work out, right? Because mm-hmm. your, your work yeah, schedule is a lot better. Yeah, I work better. less Sundays out here. Nobody does anything on Sundays in California, so I don't have to work. So, there's going to be a lot less of where's Matt. Yeah, that's true. Which is a shame, because I, I like the bit, but uh, it's also mm-hmm. nice having Matt here. It is yeah. nice. And you heard, you we know, heard you have a busy you know store at, so. that you work at now, too. Oh, yeah, and fancy Beverly Hills celebrities and rich people who are upset about everything. At an unnamed coffee shop. Yeah, unnamed. (laughs) Robin (laughs) Leach is is there for your your, uh, drive-thru audio. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, uh, we have uh, Matt on Skype, obviously, so we're going to play a two-on-two, but we have a special guest host here and someone who's been on the show before. I'm not sure what number hosting this is for you, too. One? one? Oh, it's one. Oh, so it's just one. So Kellen is joining us again. How's it going, Kellen? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, So she's a Patreon supporter, which we appreciate, but we also get a chance to see her uh, almost every week at our pub trivia at Brixie's. Uh, So what's new with you? Our apartment doesn't have heat right now. That's pretty much it. (laughs) No. So that's why you're wearing a blanket? Yeah. Do you need a space heater, guys? I don't want to set the apartment on fire. That's okay. Just just (laughs) run it when you're there. (laughs) No. Also, they have... They have much more safe ones than yeah. they did when we were <laughs> kids. Where do you think this is a death <laughs> trap? Well, Cullen said she was just going to get some uh, some wood and start a fire. Yeah. That, that sounds worse. Yeah. I think that would burn your place Hardwood down. Hardwood floors catch really easy, so we might as well just throw down a match. <laughs> Forget it. I'm sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. It's a nice offer. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Cullen's friend Emily couldn't be here. She'll be here later. Though I do uh, feel her presence. Her presence is... Studio. It, yeah, right. I feel like she's just over our shoulder for some reason. I kind of like Matt when he was a ghost for a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, I guess uh, you, you brought a game for us today, Kel? I did. Normal um, general trivia? Yeah. So hopefully something for everyone. All, All right. right. Well, I'm going to be teaming up with Neil. Uh, Thanksgiving's right around the corner. So we think. Yeah, we think. We don't know when this <laughs> is going to air, but it uh, should be sometime around Thanksgiving. So we're going to be children of the cornucopia. I like it. And the winner gets to pardon a turkey today. <laughs> it's good. Matt. I think they still eat that turkey, but... Do they? I don't know. No. I presume so. Are you, and if you guys lose, Ken has to eat a turkey. Oh. <laughs> oh no. That's a terrible bet. <laughs> yeah. So fricky, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Matt, you're going to be with Jeff. What's your team name? Uh, we are going to be Jagged Little Pilgrim. Which is possibly my favorite team name of all time. <laughs> 
Alanis Morissette themed team names. All right, well let's uh, let's go to the movie theater with Dave Coulier and see how the rules guy uh, reads the should rules today. Do, should we do a special Gilbert uh, rules today? Oh, we should. Yeah, why not? All right, let's toss to Gilbert for the rules. Triviality podcast is two rounds of twenty questions worth ten points apiece. At halftime, there's a special swing round by this week's host. In the final round. Players wager points they've earned for a chance to become the cream of the crop. The cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> that great. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know how he sent us another one. I don't know how he did it in a pilgrim voice. Yeah. I don't even know what a pilgrim voice is. Thanks to Gilbert for yeah. that. Well, he was there yeah. for the original Thanksgiving. He was. He was doing stand-up yeah. for the big Thanksgiving dinner. Truly What's the ageless. deal with maize? <laughs> You can never find it. <laughs> uh, all right, Kellen, uh, take it away. Okay, so round one, question one. Let's get real. In which form of folk dancing would you find a competition called a fesh, spelled F-E-I-S, a larger competition called an eractus, O-I-R-E-A-C-H-T-A-S, and a dance called a keili, C-E-I-L-I? We're good on this one. Sounds Irish to me. That's what I was thinking. So we think it's some kind of uh, Irish dancing? Yeah, like an Irish folk dance, but is there like a like a name for it? Or can, does that work? Or is it just like river dance? I think river dance is a specific production. So Okay, that's all I know. So. Michael Flatley. I know. Michael, Michael from, Florida from Oak Park. Oh, really? Local. He's from Oak Park? I think so. He's not I didn't Irish? Know he's, he's, he's from Chicago, I think. <laughs> is anything real anymore? No. If Michael Flatley is an Irish, then, you know, De Niro, De Niro is Irish, which is funny. And he plays so many he Italians. He could be Irish He's from Chicago, Neil. That's true. Exclusive. <laughs> He's a native of the south side of Chicago. Oh, south side. Okay. What's the name of Like a jig? Irish well, we're looking jigging? for the, the, like, festival, right? The form of folk dancing. The form of folk dancing. What about a jig? You don't want to go less specific? Like, Irish folk dancing? <laughs> we could say that if okay. we want to see Sure. Irish folk dancing. What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Irish is our mm-hmm. answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Kellen's got a little background in that, so. I... Irish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Irish is correct? It is correct. I do have a background. I was a competitive Irish dancer for about eight years. So I oh, wow. wanted to throw that in there. It seems maybe, pretty hard. We could do a little it demonstration was. in the studio here. <laughs> yes. Wow, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Oh, wow. wow. Can't believe she's that doing it. That can be it the, right the, the wager. Do you do wear them. those socks all the time and just they're just under your pants? They don't fit me anymore. Oh. I did it when I was a wee, a wee babe. Oh, a wee babe. Uh, Irish dancing, please. <laughs> No more characters. We've offended enough people. <laughs> That's fine. Just dancing over here. <laughs> um, all right. Question two. Zach Efron did not sing for himself in the first high school musical. That's the title of the question. <laughs> Marnie Nixon had a career dubbing the singing voices of some of the 20th century's top actresses. In fact, it's ironic that she sang for Natalie Wood's character in West Side Story, considering the song that she sang on what camera in what 1965 classic? You guys are still locked in. You don't. You're he, not changing. He turned the page to me, and it said West Side Story. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent deductive skills. Well, I have a guess. If you just want to lock in, sure. With my guess, yeah, okay. we'll do that. Okay. Well, we uh, we were thinking of the names of the songs in West Side Story, and uh, I said Maria, uh, and then he wrote down uh, Sound of Music because uh, the name of the character is the same. So yeah, Maria von Trapp. So that's a good guess. I mean, it's in the 60s. It was either that I was thinking or my fair later, like Oliver. But um, yeah, I can, I can go with Sound of Music. Let's do it. All right. Well, I used much less reasoning and thought of movies from the 60s where there's lots of singing. And I said there's probably singing in a movie about music and said the Sound of Music. Hey, good job. If, if correct. That is correct. <laughs> and right. the irony is she sang, how do you solve a problem like Maria, mm. which they also sang at Maria's wedding, which I think was really rude. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Question three. Even war is all in the family. Three world leaders at the time of World War I were first cousins, grandsons of Queen Victoria. One was Tsar Nicholas of Russia. One was King George V of Britain, who was the third. And this is their cousin Vinny? I don't know. This is, 
It's not helpful. You guys locked in? You yeah. said you were? Yeah. Jeff, do you have any idea? Uh, I'm trying to remember who it is. So it was, um, I, my gut goes to Wilhelm of Prussia. Okay. That would make sense. Well, yeah, she's like married a bunch of her kids and grandkids off to, to other people to try and broker mm-hmm. peace deals. And I'm just trying to remember which one this one was. Uh, yeah, I th- Wilhelm is the only one that's coming to mind. So we can go Wilhelm. Okay. Yeah, sure. I put uh, Otto von Bismarck, but I think that was his He's dad. a diplomat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. whatever. <laughs> The answer is Kaiser Wilhelm II. Oh, All job, right. Jeff. Ken and I will be doing a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Question four. Talk about a career change. Which beloved baseball player took a job as a parole commissioner after his 1939 retirement? Sure. Okay, we're locked in. You know this one, Matt? Uh, not offhand, no. 1939, you're looking at... I, I'm thinking Babe Ruth. I was thinking any, makes, someone from Murderer's Row, yeah, one of the 20s Yankees, yeah. Yeah, so either uh, Mantle or... Mantle, Babe Ruth Mantle was in the be, 50s, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you'd right. have like Lou Gehrig and you'd have mm-hmm. Babe Ruth and... Yeah. And Polish the rest, Wagner. Uh, <laughs> Babe Ruth would be pretty intimidating as a parole officer. He was a big guy. That makes sense, right? Yeah, I mean, I've got no no insight on this, so... All right, we're going Babe Ruth. It's exactly, exactly what we were thinking, so Babe Ruth. Oh, Matt said it. It's Lou Gehrig. Mm. Oh, man. Jeff said it, actually. Oh, sorry. You're the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I, think we're, I think we're both offended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question five is... Oh. Which Midwestern state is the leading producer of cranberries in the U.S. at 62% of the total production? Ooh, a Thanksgiving question. Mm-hmm. Kind of. One of these two, right? Oh. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I guess that could be right. All right, let's do that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so my first thought was Michigan. Okay, that's interesting. I know Michigan grows a lot of stuff. It's but not. Cranberries need to be grown in, like, low-lying, like, almost like bogs. Mm-hmm. I mean, Michigan has a lot of agriculture. I think it's somewhere. Yeah, I think it's more east. I know they grow a lot of blueberries and stuff. So Mm -hmm. that's where that's where I was thinking was all the berries. Yeah, I'm fine with Michigan. Okay, Michigan. All right. So we were just thinking about those commercials where all the cranberries are sitting on the water. What state has all the lakes? We decided it was uh, Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So Minnesota. It is Wisconsin. Oh, so oh we had all the states state. written there, but <laughs> <laughs> of the six or seven Midwestern states, yeah. we thought of all of them. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, According to the Census Bureau, there are 12 Midwestern states, okay, well, which seems wrong to me. Yeah, it does seem hmm. wrong. I think they include the Dakotas. So Let's be a little more exclusive, guys. Come on. <laughs> uh, after five, what do you have over there at uh, Jagged Little Pilgrim? 30. 30, and we have 20, so yeah. tight game here. So we messed up on the uh, World War One question. Yeah. Uh, question six. Turns out looks can kill. Which, quote, unquote, celebrity, arguably most known for being handsome, killed a goose with his face on a roller coaster at Busch Gardens <laughs> in 1999? <laughs> uh, <laughs> locked Apparently, in. Uh, Neil knows this uh, yes. forward and backwards. Yeah. We're, we're locked in. So are we. Oh yeah, yeah, we're locked in. Yeah. Oh yeah, we we're gonna go with uh, the man who's graced uh, all of my favorite books, uh, Fabio. Yeah. yeah, this picture didn't make it to the cover of any of those books. Uh, we said we said Fabio. Yeah. Do you guys know this? <laughs> just How do you not famous. know this? Yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> oh, so he was on this? the roller coaster, and a and a goose came by and made a head-on collision, literally. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. I think it was like the it, opening for the roller coaster too. Yeah, because there's two there's two instances in history. You got to know that one. You got to know Randy Johnson. Oh yeah, hitting the pitch. The, yeah, hitting the bird with the pitch and, and making it explode. Mm-hmm. Those are the two. Yeah. Okay, this is all That's the bird. Have you guys ever been to Bush Gardens? It's a good time. Uh, yeah, I think fun. when I was very little, I don't remember it though. That's a good theme park. I, I hear it's good. It. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, question seven. Red Hot Chili Godparents. <laughs> 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 Anthony Kiedis's godfather was half of a musical duo in the 60s and 70s who also had a career in politics. Who was his late godfather? Yeah, I agree. Yep, we're okay. locked in. We're locked in. Oh, wow. Do you have any idea, Jeff? Didn't uh, Sonny Bono get into politics? I think you're thinking yeah. of Bono. 
Bono's Bono. political, but he's not into politics. Sonny Bono. I feel like he he ran for like governor or something of California. Well, he, I feel he like definitely he was. was a, I think he was a senator. Could have been, yeah. But I feel like he was politically involved, and that's a famous '60s and '70s duo. So. Yeah, I don't think Cher was. So no. we'll go with we'll go with Sonny. We'll go with Sonny. Okay, we're gonna yeah. Sonny Bono. If, uh, Sonny Bono. If, if, yeah, if we could turn back time, we would hope you didn't get the answer right. Uh, yeah, we went with Sonny Bono. <laughs> it is, and Cher was not his godmother, so I'm not sure. Mm. What She's all of our godmothers, though. I think so. Yeah. She's taking us all in. Um, okay, question eight. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Mahatma Gandhi's first arrest took place in what country? Ooh. Wow. Okay. This is interesting. Let's talk about this. I've got I've got some ideas. Okay, good, because I have none. So Neil's uh, stroking his uh, light facial hair and thinking about the movie Gandhi. I was right gonna say now. he's he's channeling a British actor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about how it uh, it stole the Oscar for Best Picture from E. T. and even the director admitted <laughs> Come on. it. Edinburgh said, you should have won, Stephen. That's, how he, that's what he said. Um, did he? Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, and then Stephen cast him in Jurassic Park. Um, what was I going to say? So Gandhi, all I'm thinking of is Ted Danson uh, protesting uh, and getting arrested recently. He's my wallpaper. Yeah, uh, it's a great picture. So I'm, all I'm thinking of is Ted Danson, so I'm not going to be very helpful on this one, Ken. Um, w- maybe like a British um, colony, I suppose. Oh, that narrows it down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he was, I mean, he was in Britain when he was younger. Do you think he could have yeah. done something when he, before he moved, um, into the Middle East, maybe like in England, you possibly in Asia <laughs> <laughs> or Asia? Uh, yeah, that's possible. We could, we could say, uh, England. Okay. I kind of feel like, cause there was a section of that movie where he was in Engl- England before. Okay. So let's, let's say that. Okay. okay. So here's my thought. He, um, he was, he was educated in England, but he, he became a lawyer, um, in South Africa. And mm-hmm. so I'm wondering if so, like the trap answer here is India, mm-hmm. and I think well known for yeah, I think he test. I think he may arrest. have been in South Africa when he first got arrested because I don't know how politically he was when he was in England. So okay, uh, I'm okay with South Africa. Okay, I'm okay with that too because it feels like India is a trap. So and the answer is South Africa. Ooh. He was arrested <laughs> in 1908 for not carrying an obligatory pass after Indians were forced to register with the government mm-hmm. of South Africa. That's a good, uh, good answer, Jeff. I would like to credit my college course on the uh, modern history of India for that. <laughs> well, that would do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question nine. Is the Megan Rapinoe fan club the first official Women's World Cup tournament for soccer or football, if you're not in the U.S., took place in 1991? And how many of the eight tournaments have the U.S. women's national team medaled? Medaled. Ooh, that's messed up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking this. I could be thinking of something else, but all right. So, what do you think? Do you think they meddled in all of them? I know they have the most victories of any country. Oh, you know what? And I'm list- you're saying the question again. I was thinking of gold, right? So, of medals. That's, that's yeah. That's why. I said I, yeah, I, I, was I screwed up. I would say it's either all of them or one less than all of them. Maybe yeah, let's say eight. Okay. Right. Yeah. So they're locked in with eight. I was also thinking eight. Yeah, I, I was know, thinking for sure at least seven. Because yeah. those early ones, like, there weren't even that many countries that sent teams. Right. Like, it was, so it was, you know, they were at a huge advantage, at least until their more recent years, and they've won. They've just or, been dominant since, yeah. Since roughly 2000. The, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with eight. Well, we'll say eight. Locking in eight. That's mm. correct. They've medaled in all of them. Um, the men's team medaled in their first FIFA tournament in 1930 and have not medaled since, and they make four times as much money, more than four mm-hmm. times as much money. Anyway, question 10. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go spelunking. Stalactites and stalagmites are mineral deposits formed by dripping water, and both are found within caves, but which one grows up from the floor? Yeah, we're good, Matt. All right. So we just have to pick, is it stalactites that go from the ground or stalagmites? Mites. Mites. Come from the floor. You think it would be tights because you wear tights on your legs. So it would be coming from ground up. Do your legs that grow that. up? <laughs> so my turns you, out, they're the opposite. It my turns legs. out all of Neil's geology <laughs> knowledge is fashion based. <laughs> stalagmites. Mites, okay. Mites. I trust you. I would never go in a cave. So whatever you say, I'm good with. I'm fairly certain this is stalagmites. 
That's correct. Think of an M. Why? Because Cause the points go up. The points go up. No. I, I'm just going to remember So it. McDonald's <laughs> is a stalagmite. Yeah, still a, mm-hmm. it, McDonald's is just two stalagmites selling burgers for everybody. The stalagmite of fast food. <laughs> All right. Well, after the uh, first round, it looks like we got 60 points. And uh, what were you? Jagged li- Little Pilgrim? Yeah. You have mm-hmm. uh, 80 points. That is correct. So you're just barely mm-hmm. outrunning us, but uh, uh-huh. that all can change shortly. So I wanted to take a moment. I was talking with Jeff the other day, and uh, it was pretty crazy because so Jeff posts the episodes every week, um, and we have our hosting service, Podbean, and you're able to kind of see all of the um, episodes that you've posted. So we looked at the numbers and we're almost at, including bonus episodes uh, and Patreon bonus episodes, 200 episodes, which is pretty crazy uh, and pretty great. Um, But we were looking at the numbers and uh, what was pretty fascinating to us is that we've actually never missed an episode. Uh, We've never had a rerun. We've never missed an episode. Pretty good, not bad. Not bad. Um, And uh, I was just thinking about all the the hard work because I think a lot of people don't know is, uh, one, we've never missed an episode. Um, we edit all of our episodes. We record and mix all our episodes. We do all of our own social media, our own, all our own marketing, writing questions when mm-hmm. we host, scheduling, all that kind of stuff. So um, just kind of looking so we're back. looking for an intern. Is that what you're yeah. saying? <laughs> Matt's our intern now. We skipped now. weddings, funerals. Yes. Just for the show. The births of our children yeah. that we'll never see. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So we were just looking back and it was just pretty, pretty crazy that we've gotten this far. Uh, so thank you to all of you for listening and kind of growing our community um to to help us with this and that kind of directly feeds into uh patreon because uh whether you're a regular listener or someone who supports the show monetarily um it all helps and uh with patreon it's super super beneficial to us to help us to be able to do that to to edit everything to buy the equipment and and record so as of right now that's our only income from the show too yes we have no advertising no sponsorships i know it seems like we do because neil gives a free one away every week but (laughs) yeah just just hoping for for one of them um actually today we're kind of sponsored by our friend ron ryman um uh, who plays with us at pub trivia uh locally here but he made these awesome uh mats i don't know what would you call them ken a game game mats game mats they're kind of like like huge mouse pads but you could play uh Magic the Gathering on these things. Uh, I'm sure many, many other games, but... Uh, it's the only one I play. <laughs> <laughs> they're very uh, they're very helpful uh, to reduce sound on our table and, uh, you know, just kind of provide us a little surface where we can uh, organize our, our effects. Yeah, that's nice. I can put a coffee mug over Ken's face or my face. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> um, it just depends on how the day's going. But uh, one other thing, too, that is a support of the show is your reviews. And Matt, you said we're, we're getting up pretty high on those. Yep, we're up to 196, so if you haven't left a review yet on iTunes, uh, we appreciate those. A lot of really positive ones, Uh, so thank you for all those. Yeah, and the Patreon support is extremely helpful. Uh, If you don't support us, please do consider uh, throwing in a dollar, you know? Mm -hmm. It it doesn't matter. Just whatever you can spare. And if you can't uh, support us on Patreon, just tell a friend about the show. That's equally Mm -hmm. helpful, and one day, day, hopefully, we can kind of... You know, propel this train forward and get get a little more income, and we can focus even more on the show. Yeah, yeah. If you have a fussy baby, uh, they love Dutch boys. So if you know any kids with uh, or parents, oh yeah. You know, Spe- with <laughs> Speaking of that, that there was a funny email, right? Uh, do you have that? Oh, here it is. So uh, this is from uh, Jason Langenfelder. Uh, thank you for your email. It says, hey guys, I wanted to share a story with you. My wife and I were headed. Uh, to visit a friend about three hours away and they were listening or attempting to listen to one of the episodes the uh, infant was crying bloody murder in the car seat until neil's little dutch boy started Uh, my daughter stopped crying and started laughing so now i found out that if i imitate the little dutch boy it's clearly not as good uh, because they uh, there's only one little dutch boy it makes her laugh and i have to do it daily Damn you, triviality. <laughs> so thank you very much for your email, Jason. We appreciate that. But uh, what does Dutch Boy think about that? Please stop crying. The world is made of marshmallows and molasses, Henley. Please, no cry zone, please. Dutch Boy, you've, you've cried some uh, some tears of anguish in your life, haven't you? Every year Andy Dalton misses the playoffs, <laughs> I cry. Oh, thank you, thank you little so Dutch bad. Boy. I didn't know he was uh, a Bengals fan. <laughs> That's the orange. It reminds me of the tigers uh. that raised me in the wild. Oh, Dutch boy's backstory is getting pretty crazy. <laughs> all right. Well, with all that uh, nonsense out of the way, let's uh, mm-hmm. pop over to the swing round. 
Okay, so what I have prepared is 10 TV show spoken intros that mm-hmm. I will read. Okay. And you just have to tell me what TV show these come from. Now, are you doing this like jung, jung. beat poetry or William Shatner? Or? If I tried, I would probably stop after about three words. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not so good at the impressions. I'm, I'm no Dutch boy. Okay. It could be argued that the Dutch boy impression is also terrible. <laughs> it could be argued. It could be. You know, we're going to find his birth certificate, and it's definitely going to say Germany, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm. All right. I am actually Bavarian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one. There are two kinds of folk who sit around and think about how to kill people, psychopaths and mystery writers. I'm the kind that pays better. Number two. Now the story of a wealthy family who lost everything, and the one son who had no choice but to keep them all together. It's... Number three. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade into the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if nobody else can help, and if you can find them, then maybe you can hire... It's a lot of caveats to hiring those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you not, gotta have rules. A lot of liability. <laughs> They'll do anything though. <laughs> but they won't do that. <laughs> Meatloaf. <That's it. laughs> Number four. In New York City's war on crime, the worst criminal offenders are pursued by the detectives of the Major Case Squad. These are their stories. Bum, bum. Jung jung. <laughs> Which one, though? Number five. We all use math every day to predict weather, to tell time, to handle money. Math is more than formulas or equations. It's logic. It's rationality. It's using your mind to solve the biggest mysteries we know. Number six. Hi, I'm Eliza, part of your average family. I got a dad, a mom, and a sister. That's Donnie. We found him. And Darwin, he found us. About our house, it moves because we travel all over the world. You see, my dad holds his nature show and my mom shoots it. Okay, so we're not that average, but between you and me, something amazing happened, and now I can talk to animals. It's pretty cool and totally secret, and you know what? Life will never be the same. Smash him. (laughs) (laughs) That guy. Number seven, you are being watched. The government has a secret system, a machine that spies on you every hour of every day. I know because I built it. I designed the machine to detect acts of terror, but it sees everything. Violent crimes involving ordinary people, people like you. Crimes the government considered irrelevant. They wouldn't act, so I decided I would. But I needed a partner, someone with the skills to intervene. Hunted by the authorities, we work in secret. You'll never find us, but victim or perpetrator, if your number's up, we'll find you. Number eight. The rich and powerful take what they want. We steal it back for you. We provide blank. After hearing some of these, I think Neil's pilot really has a chance. (laughs) (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) Number nine. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to... And number 10. Once upon a time, there were three little girls who went to the police academy. And they were each assigned very hazardous duties. But I took them away from all that. And now they work for me. My name is... Cool. Okay. Let us think about these uh, answers and we'll be back. On that note, all the answers are locked in. Okay, so for number one, there are two kinds of folk who sit around and think about how to kill people, psychopaths and mystery writers. I'm the kind that pays better. Jeff. Um, I actually, we went with uh, Castle. Ooh, that is a, a, a newer show that's probably pithier mm-hmm. than our answer. Uh, we went Murder, She Wrote. It is Castle. Good grab from uh, Neil on that one. Yeah, I figured that uh, she, Angela Lansbury wouldn't brag about how much money she's making, so I said it's got to be Nathan Fillion on there. Makes sense. It does sound like Nathan <laughs> Fillion's <laughs> voice saying it. Okay, number two. Now the story of a wealthy family who lost everything and the one son who had no choice but to keep them all together. It's... 
Arrested Development. It's a ukulele playing in the background. Uh, yeah, we said Arrested Development. Yeah. Okay, number three. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent yeah, to yeah, prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This blah, blah, one's blah. way mm-hmm. long. Then maybe you can hire... The A-Team. Yeah, we said the A-Team. The A-Team. Number four. In New York City's war on crime, the worst criminal offenders are pursued by the detectives of the Major Case Squad. These are their stories. Chong. Yeah, we went law and order, criminal intent. Yeah, we had the we had, we weren't sure between just regular law and order and uh, criminal intent, but I'm pretty sure this is criminal intent. So criminal intent. It is criminal intent. All regular right. law and order is um, there are dedicated three branch, detectives. Two branches. Two investigations. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's SVU. No. Then there's a different one for LA. I thought and SVU UK. was the most hein- heinous crime. The de- and then the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious oh, crimes are God. members of an elite squad known as the Special S- Victims Unit. These are their stories. Oh. Someone in the SVU. I'm hearing a ghost. Yeah, someone <laughs> in the studio. All right, number five. We all use math every day. Predict weather, blah, 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 blah. Mysteries we know. Numbers. No, we said it, numbers. It's actually num threers, number but we'll take numbers. Wow. Is that how David Krumholtz <laughs> says it? Okay, number six. Hi, I'm Eliza. Long, mm-hmm. long, 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 long. And you know what? Life will never be the same. Uh, the wild thornberries. Yep, also said wild thornberries. It is the wild. Thorn- That's what actually sparked my inspiration for this. Smashing. Smashing. Number seven. You are being watched. La, 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 la. You'll never find us. But victim or perpetrator, if your number's up, we'll find you. Uh, Neil said person of interest mm-hmm. starring Jesus this is a- Christ <laughs> <laughs> starring Jesus Christ yes. Cookie and the dude from Lost yeah this and is the Edmund one where I, I could name the actors and I couldn't remember the show and then Jeff came up with it so person of interest that is correct just to be clear Jim Caviezel yes <laughs> yeah not Jesus <laughs> stars in uh, person of interest and also passion of the Christ <laughs> number eight the rich and powerful take what they want we steal it back for you we provide Used to love this one, uh, starring Timothy Hutton, Leverage. Oh, I've never seen it. Uh, I said Pawn Stars. (laughs) (laughs) Best I could do is eight bucks. (laughs) But this costs $600. I'll give you seven bucks for it. Yes, it is Leverage. I got Uh, got to make a profit on this, you know. (laughs) It's just going to sit in my shop where it's never going to be sold (laughs) for (laughs) tourists to look at. All right, number nine. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery, which reaches from the inner mind to... Neil's bedroom. Uh, (laughs) Which I also refer to as the outer limits. Yeah, it's a dark and horrifying place. The outer limits. That's correct. And number 10. Once upon a time, there were three little girls who went to the police academy, and they were each assigned very hazardous duties. But I took them away from all that, and now they work for me. My name is... Ah, a uh, reading at the front of this show that is as condescending as the show itself, uh, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, we are inclined to agree. We said uh, this is Charlie of Charlie's Angels. Yep, the creepiest of all the ten shows, Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> we added 40. What would you guys have? 50. At 50. Perfect 50 wow. on that. So we're at 110. You guys are at 120. So Ooh. the lead has shrunk. Ooh. It's a shootout. The lead was in the pool. There was significant shrinkage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Round two. All right. Question one. Plutarch is rolling in his grave. The Egg McMuffin and Chicken McNuggets were released about 10 years apart. Which came first? We're locked. Okay. I think the Egg McMuffin was one of the first new items introduced. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've got no idea. Obviously, I'm sure this was... They were both out, I'm sure, before we were born even, so... Yeah, I don't remember or, or if this close was to. in... I, don't, I, don't, I always remember kno- them being out. <laughs> I mean, all my knowledge about this is from the founder, and I don't remember him being like, let's bring on some chicken nuggets. So, right. Okay. Well, you yeah. have a little bit more insight than I do, then. Yeah, Egg McMuffin. Okay. Yeah, I kind of... I think there was a scene about this in the founder, right, Neil? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Talking about breakfast. Batman was like, yeah, we better serve breakfast. So we want Egg McMuffin. It was the Egg McMuffin released in 1972. Chicken McNuggets were selectively released in 1981 and then fully in 1983. Woman of the Year. Three esteemed actors won their only Oscars for acting alongside Catherine Hepburn for five points apiece. Which actors are they? Three women? Three actors. Oh, there's three actors. Three men actors, I should say. 
Of all the men I ever worked with, you are by far the biggest brute. Now, hand me my shoulder pads. You love that transatlantic accent, don't you? I love it. I want to do a whole whole episode in that. That'd be great. Good luck. No, I can I can commit if I need to commit to something, Jeff. I will commit till I die. It only works if you speak at eighty words per minute. Yeah, right. Um, I just I'm thinking of one more. What about that uh, that movie with the with the boat? I I have that one. Titanic. Okay. That's what Leonardo Rose? DiCaprio won. Oh, you're thinking of... Are you thinking of the old, old boat movie or the one in color? The one in color. Okay, yeah. I have that one. Okay. Um, there's one I'm, I'm forgetting. I'm the just... one with that royalty from that, that one continent? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Australia? I have that movie. That one he didn't win. Okay. I don't think. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> so sadly, proud. Sadly, I'm pretty sure I, I know that wasn't a winner and it's the only one I could think of. Off the My third head. one I think is incorrect, but I'm just going to go with it. All right. We're yeah. locked in? We're locked cool. in. Cool. Ken was alluding to, I believe, the African queen. I so. don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't think of a single one. A boat movie okay. I like. Yeah. How about that? That's weird. What about... Uh, Humphrey Nindu. said to me, that's a nice pair of gams you got there. I slapped him right across the face I did. Uh, what's his face? Something Newman. We'll say Paul Newman. Newman. <laughs> yeah. I know he's won probably multiple. Uh, well, I'll have your pick because I don't think we're yeah. getting anything on this. All right. Uh, James Dean and Paul Newman. I, I'm not too sure on this one. I was trying to go through her movies and I I don't know. Anyway, uh, the the actor that she made better, um, Spencer Tracy, I put. Uh, Henry Fonda for On Golden Pond. I don't mm. know if he won for that. And then uh, I believe he won for something else, but I put Jimmy Stewart. So for Philadelphia Story, Jimmy Stewart. For On Golden Pond, Henry Fonda. And for African Queen Humphrey Bogart. Oh, well, he did win one. Sorry, I told oh, you. Bogart. That was my bad. I didn't think I he won. That. I don't Bogey. think he won. I don't even think Spencer Tracy won an Oscar. Maybe he did. I can't remember. Well, that'll tie the game. I think he did. I don't. But his only one wasn't. His only one with wasn't her. Yeah. Or it. He had multiple or something like that. It wasn't for Adam's rib. He didn't belong in this question. Do we get? Do we get points for the one that we got? You have five points. You got ten get total. Ten points. You got, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll five tie the game. Each one? Okay. Are we going to let the Jimmy Stewart impression pass us by? Yep, we are. Yeah. Okay. There's enough Go impressions ahead. on this episode. <laughs> Go ahead Save with the next question, one. please. Uh, oh, just turn, uh, turn the page there, please. Please. Oh, that's real old Jimmy Stewart. That's, that's my old Jimmy Stewart, yeah. Well, what is that, a computer? <laughs> is, that, is that iOS over there? <laughs> is it some sort of animal like a cheetah? It's magic. <laughs> Cheetah's the fastest land animal. Did you know that, dear? <laughs> Jimmy, you look great for having been dead so many years. It's all the moisturizing. Something's Dancing happening over things. there in that graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We apologize to the Jimmy Stewart estate. <laughs> They're listening right now. Question three. She brought a folding chair. Shirley Chisholm was the first African-American woman elected to Congress. Which state did she represent? And for a bonus point, was she elected to the Senate or the House of Representatives? Maybe California. Sure. Maybe. I mean, if it's like the House, they have a lot of people to elect to the House. So yeah. I mean, playing the oh, odds if we think too. it's a House, <clears throat> so if we think it's a House ca- seat specifically. But yeah, we could do California and House. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe it was the yeah House. Um, I don't think it was the Senate, and I actually think it was New York. It was New York for the House of Representatives. Mm. Neil I pulled one out. Her, <laughs> right idea, wrong coast. Yep, that's okay. Her famous quote of "If they don't bring you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair." How did you so, uh, score that one? It was five each. Uh, ten points, and then one for the uh, House of Representatives. So one point plus one. Yeah. So so plus eleven then. Oh, ah yeah. man. Okay. So we'll never point. make that point up. I know. <laughs> um, okay. Question four. The tiniest goat. Simone Biles has the most world championship medals in gymnastics history. As of October 27th, how many medals has she won? It's got to be in that range. Yeah, it's for a sure. Range. We're locked in. We have a ballpark on this? I think it's in the 12 to 15 range. It might be higher f- than that. Um, so you figure there's at least four or five events per championship, and she's been doing it for like six years. Right, and they're doing worlds, what? 
every other every year? two years yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the Olympics, the two years in between, I think. So she's probably been at like 10 events. I mean, I, I maybe like been like 26, something around there, right? Do you think yeah, it's I was 20s? thinking it was, I was thinking like mid low 20s, but yeah. Well, want to say 27? Sure. For, okay. Locked in 27. All right. We said 20. It is 24. Mm. Right uh, in the middle. Split the difference. Yeah. That's a tough one. All right. Question five. You might call it the element of the 21st century. What element is number 54 on the periodic table? Spelled with one letter differently, it is the girl of the 21st century. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah. Locked in. <laughs> it's just going to be on Disney+. Plus. Oh. All three of the whole trilogy is going to be on Disney+. Plus. We're locked in, and, too. And a reboot where she's 40, right? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh yeah, we're locked in. It's Xeon, right? Or no, uh, fifty-four, I believe, is Krypton. It's well, the the girl of the twenty-first century is Xenon. Oh, you're oh, oh yeah, Xenon. You're right. Yeah, Krypton is uh thirty-six. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. same thing. Watch a Disney movie, Jeff. It's, Jeez, Jeff. It's Xenon. It is mm-hmm. Xenon. Which the whole has... trilogy is going to be on Disney Plus. Sure is. The first movie has a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So you're kidding me. <laughs> Seven reviews. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, Kellen. Maybe. Uh, so let's, let's, bump, let's bump that up. If you're listening and you want to go to me. <laughs> While you're reviewing this show, please also review Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. Uh, after five in the second round, I believe uh, Children of the Cornucopia were at 151. If my math is correct. If my numbers th- are correct. Or have you said it? Wow. Numbers. Numbers. Uh, no, we, we do, have 140. I would say if we get the bonus without the question, it's 141. I don't know how to score that one. But yeah, 140. You take 141. Okay. Yeah, give yourself cool. a point. Question six. <laughs> the forbidden shamrock shake. Mm. How many pounds of powdered vegetable dye are added to the Chicago River to turn it green for St. Patrick's Day? And I'll take a range of 10 on either side. 10 mm. pounds? Yeah. All right, we're in. Jeff, as a Chicago resident, I'm going to leave this up to you. Oh, you... <laughs> 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 you son of a... <laughs> Even though you moved, you lived here longer than I did. Um... <laughs> It's a lot. I'm imagining like a, it. It would have to be a bit, right? I've watched the, um, there's like a time-lapse video of them pouring it in. And it takes a while even on a time-lapse, so you've got to figure. Like, are they like dumping bags? What are they doing here? Yeah, and those bags are. How are, many bags probably, are they dumping? Exactly. Just I'm, guess the number. <laughs> no, I want to figure this out. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, within 10, it can't, it can't be that big. Then. I'm thinking maybe like 80 to eighty to 90, somewhere around there, right? Okay. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking maybe maybe a little more, maybe uh, 150 somewhere in there. But okay, let's do. Well, we have 141, so let's say 141. Okay. All right, we're gonna say about a quarter of a ton, uh, 550. Well, it was 40 pounds. Oh, <laughs> that's not a lot. It's the same really weight as an adult striped hyena. Fun fact. Oh, <laughs> that's it. I definitely googled for the whole river. Yeah, that seems like crazy. not enough. It must be super condensed. Well, when Matt was saying it was a couple bags, I was like, okay, the bags are going to weigh like 40 pounds each. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Question seven. I'm not much into health food. I'm into 19th century literature. Rupert Holmes, the writer and performer of Escape, the Pina Colada song, wrote a musical based on Charles Dickens' last unfinished novel. What is the name of this novel and musical in which the audience determines the ending? I, I know what she's talking about. I just, I'm trying to think of the title. This is like a choose-your-own-adventure play? I don't understand. The ending is because the novel was unfinished. Oh. So. Uh, I don't know. We might have to tap on this one or just come up with a, a, Dick, a Dickensian title. So, Oliver Twist? Sure. That's funny considering that, you know, the ending could be whatever, but... Oliver Twist 2? Um, nope. We have nothing, right? Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Oliver Twist the musical. Well, I went and saw this play, and I had great expectations for the ending, but it never came. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to just Boo. guess great expectations. <laughs> it is The Mystery of Edwin Drood. Oh, never heard of it. <sighs> yes. I should have gotten that. That was my bad. All right. Oh. Question eight. The world's biggest carpool. Which city's mass transit system has the most riders per year? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, based on my two weeks here... Uh, <laughs> 
think it's Los Angeles. Oh, uh, it's um, pretty horrible. I think it's a city with a larger population. And <clears throat> you I'm trying Houston? to know. No, no. I'm thinking like a, like a Tokyo, a Hong Kong. Shanghai's got a huge. Um, Maybe Tokyo then. You want to go with Tokyo? Yeah, I'm good going to Tokyo. They have okay. people who they literally pay to jam people onto the subway with. They're called pushers. Okay. So. It sounds horrible. Okay, Tokyo. We're going Tokyo. It is Tokyo. Yeah, nice. Play three point four six three billion writers wow. per year. Ooh. Question nine. This is literally titled a real sports question for you, All man. Right. Which men's college basketball team has the most Final Four appearances at a total of twenty? We locked. Yeah. All right, we're locked. Okay. Um. So. I think it's either UCLA or North Carolina. Well, UCLA, you're talking like the wooden area, right? Like the, yeah. that whole time. Yeah. It was... it's a, it said final four appearances, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it wouldn't be like Duke and I mean, it might be Kentucky, but um, I think I think UCLA is, is probably the best bet because they had so many in those early seasons and then they've had a few since then. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I know a couple that would be up there for contention, but I'm, I'll mm-hmm. let you figure. What else would you think? Just no, all the ones you said, I, I agree with. I mean, North Carolina was good for a while. Kentucky has been good. Duke. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't think they're up there. It's, as, it's like, too recent. They've only yeah. been good since like the early nineties. Right. So, uh, so. Well, let's go to UCLA. Okay. Sounds good. I thought about UCLA, uh, because of wooden, uh, being one of the best coaches of all time. I also thought about Nick Nolte and blue chips, which had no relevance to the question, but, uh, uh, I wasn't too sure. Uh, I don't have great basketball, college basketball knowledge, but I just went with Kentucky. I thought they might have had more than Duke and Gonzaga mm. and whatnot. Matt, it was North Carolina. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, yeah. I was between the two. All right. Well, question 10, his bug Friday in July. <laughs> The Department for Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs in England condemned a single individual insect to death. What was the type of bug that one sentence absconded, never to be seen again? I'm trying to think of bugs that would ruin agri- agriculture consistently. Uh, it sounds like it's more of a joke. Oh, you think? Let's say a ladybug. Jiminy Brexit. <laughs> or a ladybird, if you prefer, since we're talking about England. Did someone say Jiminy Brexit? <laughs> That's very good. All right, we're locked in. If it's just, I, this seems like it was something, it had to have been like an event or maybe like ruined, like the royal wedding or whatever or something. I don't know. But I have no idea. The royal baby would have been born about that time. That would have been funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll maybe, let you... maybe, so the meme was those moths, right? That was funny. That was the summer. <laughs> Can I get some uh, some lamp? <laughs> <laughs> so that was this summer. So let's say moth. Okay. So we said uh, ladybird, but Neil Neil has. I think it has to do with the the wedding, the royal wedding. Now that he said that, mm-hmm. it it jogged something in my memory. The answer is a bee, a mason mm. bee that came over in someone's luggage, native to Turkey, and they were a concern it would be a threat to the native species. Oh, I was way off then. Oh. Sam's night. But he's free now, so. I was way off. <laughs> I, th- I think we have 161. Yeah, that's right. All right. And we have 151. Yep. Ooh, Ooh, we've retained the lead. So for the final round, the question titles are Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Yep. And all the wagers are now locked in. Dramatic. Okay. Huron. Huron, South Dakota, is the hometown of Cheryl Ladd, who, amongst other things, appeared in Santa Paws 2, The Santa Pups, a movie, <laughs> a movie in the Santa Paws franchise, which serves as a prequel series for Santa Buddies, an Air Buddies film, which is a spinoff franchise from Air Bud. Counting the Air Bud, Air Buddies, and Santa Paws films, how many movies exist in the Air Bud canon in a range of two? The we Air, Air Bud out. extended universe? Yes. Yeah. Ontario. The province of Ontario passed legislation in 2009 stating that what word does not constitute an admission of guilt? Michigan. Michigan, first the lake and then the state, is a word derived from an Ojibwe word, Michigama, fittingly meaning what? Pure Michigan. (laughs) Tim Allen. (laughs) Cocaine. (laughs) Mm. All right, four? 
Eerie. This instrument, named for its inventor, is found in the music for Midsummer Murders, Monster House, The Day the Earth Stood Still, and Death Wish 2, consisting of two antennae that the player does not touch. What is the eerie sounding instrument called? Yeah, I think I know what I meant. Mm -hmm. And Superior. The U.S. might have the most summer and combined Olympic medals in the world, but what country is superior to all the rest in the Winter Games? Got it. All the answers are locked in, so let's uh, get those questions one more time. Okay. Huron, Huron, South Dakota, is the hometown of Cheryl Ladd, who, amongst other things, appeared in Santa Paws 2, The Santa Pups, a movie in the Santa Paws franchise, which serves as a prequel series for Santa Buddies, an Air Buddies film, which is a spinoff franchise from Air Bud. Counting the Air Bud, Air Buddies, and Santa Paws films, how many movies exist within the Air Bud canon? The ABCU. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my, my reasoning with this one um, was uh, that... I think there's like treasure buddies, space buddies, something buddies, and then another buddies. There's like four of those. Um, there's like four or five air buds. There's like baseball, football, basketball. Um, so I, I kind of just thought about all the ones I could think of and picture, and we went with 14 for, and, 10, mm, for 10, 10 points. points. Yeah. Uh, we wagered zero, had no idea, didn't care, and said 17. The answer is 13. So uh, points to you guys. Um, and Cheryl Ladd uh, also replaced Farrah Fawcett on Charlie's Angels. She did. Speaking of the uh, reference there. I think that's how I got to this question. <laughs> All right. Ontario. The province of Ontario passed legislation in 2009 stating that what word does not constitute an admission of guilt? Uh, for another 10 points, we thought you were being a little cheeky, and we said sorry. Or sorry. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we wagered 20. Uh, this is something that they used to to say if you got in an accident uh don't apologize because it admits guilt but they've been trying to kind of move back from that so people are less rude when they slam into people uh, we made your 20 and said sorry that is sorry it is the apology act um which i have the full thing up but it's long so i'm not gonna read it thank you mm-hmm. okay michigan <laughs> michigan first the lake and then the state were named from a word derived from the ojibwe word michigama f- fittingly meaning what uh, for another 10, we thought maybe this was one of the many lake lakes, and we said lake. Mm. Uh, we wagered 20, and I thought that this might mean big-ass lake. <laughs> <laughs> it means large lake, which I don't know if I can take lake because it's a Come compound on. word, and go- and one of the words means large, and one of the words means lake. Did you say it was hyphenated? No, it's not, but it's. For, I don't know what to do. <laughs> If Emily were here, I guess she could be a tiebreaker. Yeah, well, Ghost of Emily, what is the... <laughs> oh. No point. She says no. She spoke through me. And we did non-jokingly lock in with Large Lake, right? You just said Big Ass Lake. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, they're both correct. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they would care about a synonym for Large being Big Ass. <laughs> I feel betrayed. I don't know. Maybe they had a Large Ass-based culture, so... <laughs> Eerie, this instrument, named for its inventor, is found in the music for Midsummer Murders, Monster House, The Day the Earth Stood Still, and Death Wish 2, consisting of two antennae that the player does not touch. What is the earring-sounding instrument called? For another 10 points, we said theremin. Yeah, we wagered 20 on this one, and um, we agree. We think it's the theremin. It is the theremin. It's like very weird to watch somebody play it and just like kind of move their hand around. I don't understand. Have you guys seen Midsummer Murders? Mm-mm. It's like Mm-mm. 20 seasons. Nobody on that show is happily married. Everybody hates their spouse, except for the cop. <laughs> so why there's so much murder? Well, it's a town of like eight people, and six people get murdered, and then they have to figure out which of the other two people did it <laughs> <laughs> every episode. And you always see some old guys, but so. That's a shame. It's a wild, wild ride. Everybody subscribe to Acorn <laughs> and watch Midsummer Murder. <laughs> Superior. The U.S. might have the most summer and combined Olympic medals in the world, but what country is superior to all the rest in the Winter Games? So we uh, originally put Russia, because they do pretty good in the Winter Games, but uh, we were we were convinced it might be Norway, despite their size, for 10 points. So yeah, for this one, we had uh, we had Norway. We figured not only do they have like the most medals, I think, like per person, because they're only like a country of 5 million, we think they just have them full stop. So we said Norway for 20. 
It is Norway. They have 368. The U.S. is in second with 305. And Russia has 120. So, good thinking. Mm. So, fortune has favored the bold in that final round. We bet 10s all the way down, and uh, we gained 30 points for 191. Respectable. But uh, betting uh, 20 points all the way down, is that right? Except for the first question? Right. The only one we missed we didn't bet on. So, so. you did great. Uh, You ended up with 231, and you are the cream of the crop. The cream rise to the top oh yeah jagged little pilgrim <laughs> best team they've ever <laughs> jagged little pilgrim <laughs> <laughs> well good job guys Yay. Yes. good job to kellen for yes. the great game excellent oh, okay. game good game okay. yeah great questions all over the board mm-hmm. we appreciate you coming in i've stopped sweating so <laughs> maybe uh, emily will join us next time We'll see. Yeah, we'll have to uh, do a seance, see if we can get her over here. Well, uh, yes, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Thanks to Kellen, a uh, Patreon supporter, for writing this game that was fun to play today. If you guys would like to uh, check out some of our new merchandise, go to inkedinscreen.com, or you can go to uh, trivialitypodcast.com and click merchandise. Um, but uh, we appreciate all of your support, and thank you for the reviews, for uh, interacting with us on the crop, and for Jeff, Ken, Matt over in L.A., Kellen, Uh, and the ghost of Emily. My name is Neil, and that was Triviality. Become little baby. (laughs) All you have to know is if if there's semen, it's SVU. Right. And if Ice-T says there's semen, it's SVU. So the studio is SVU. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. You mean to tell me they got semen on the microphone? (laughs) 